is Jasmine, I'm an illustrator, and welcome to my channel! If you've been following my writing vlogs regarding my medieval comic script project, I just finished writing Act 2, and this vlog is going to focus on beginning to write Act 3. When I finished writing Act 2, that was actually almost a week ago. I wrote so much that I kind of needed a break in between those big sections, and I've been using that break to just reevaluate the story, reevaluate the characters. So what I'm gonna do right now is not just jump straight into writing, I'm gonna sit down and just continue to brainstorm on the direction that I wanna take these characters. This is like really important that I have to do right now, um, even though I, I really do want to just jump in and start writing again, I really should devote another half hour to do some brainstorming. I did that yesterday and I actually spent like three or four hours sitting on the couch brainstorming and writing a ton of notes. So I'm going to continue to do that and then jump into writing. So that's what we're going to do today. This is a new sweater. I finally celebrated Christmas with my parents on Sunday. It's Tuesday today. And I always usually spend Christmas with my parents, but because of the plague, I decided on not come going over until this Omicron stuff just quieted down a little bit. Finally got some of my Christmas gifts, and it includes this really, really cozy sweater from UGG, like the company UGG. And yeah. I've been into more muted colors, maybe because of my medieval phase right now, um, but it is, I don't know, it reminds me of the Middle Ages and I really like it. I still have some hot coffee in here, so I'm gonna just be drinking it from here and getting to work. <laughs> I should probably uh, talk a little bit about what we're gonna work on since we're starting Act 3. I'm gonna put music on and I'm going to reimagine some of the scenes I've already written and see if any of that makes sense. I just want to spend like a little bit of time thinking about it before jumping into the third act of this story. What is the third act? Well, I don't want to give too many spoilers, but as you might know if you've watched the last video about um, writing act two is that act three is going to be starting right at the end of this medieval tournament that we were involved in. Um, I can't give away too much as to how it ends, but I will say that we're eventually going to go to Paris. Paris in 1415. So I am really excited to be able to write us as the reader going into Paris in the Middle Ages. How we're going to go to Paris, I have the main plot points. Um, I just don't know exactly the details of how we're gonna go in and especially how long the scenes are gonna be going into Paris. So that'll be another thing I'm gonna be brainstorming right now on just how are we going to approach going to this new location, how? So I'm gonna start putting some music on. I have Save the Cat outlining buddy here. I don't refer to it too much because my outline's already been done. Uh, this is more of just a reminder because since we are starting Act 3, we have um, just the main things that we need to go over. So it's a good just reminder of how I'm diving into this portion of the story. So I like to have this around just for quick reference. And for my notebook, I wrote all of this yesterday as well as I wrote this part and then this extra sheet because it's a continuation of this first page. So I do feel like writing things by hand first helps with uh, not feeling committed to anything that you are establishing. really glad I read this because according to Save the Cat, I am not at the end of Act 2. I'm actually two big beats before the end of Act 2. I stopped at the all is lost 
point. I actually thought that the all is lost point onwards was act three, when things change, but according to this, I mean, I know it doesn't really matter, but it's just interesting that I totally thought that we were done with act two, but technically, according to this book, we are at the end of act two, but we're still two beats away because we need to have the character lose everything and then react or ponder as to how and why and what to do about having lost everything. I don't think it really matters, but interesting that I totally thought that we were already starting on a new act. You think, Kitty? What do you think? Okay, I think it was like an hour of brainstorming. I think I'm ready to start writing. I must have slept on it wrong because I woke up this morning with the stiffest neck. I can't actually, yep, yeah, past that I can't move it. It's definitely like moving it up. Yeah, it hurts a lot. Um, so I'm gonna put some more Icy Hot and make tea and we're gonna start writing. Here are more Christmas gifts. So this one my sister-in-law gave me. It's loose leaf vanilla black tea. Apparently it has caffeine, so I think I'm gonna go for that instead of making another coffee cup. Um, and then this mug my cousin gave to me. It has a top to it. I think it was so cute. Come on, Candle, I know you have at least a couple hours left. Look what it says too. It was my mom's candle. There you go. I think we're still in business. <laughs> hmm. Questionable. I'm gonna put a 20 minute timer and we'll see how we do on our first sprint. It's been 20 minutes, that was my first writing sprint of the day, and I I had to revise the last scene of Act 2. It just, I feel like I also needed to read that because it's been almost four days since I last wrote, so I just needed to acquaint myself with the last scene. And in doing so, I did remove a few things and add 54 words, so it is what it is. I think, I think we can move on. Let's start with a 30 minute sprint. Taking a break for some yogurt. As a reminder, this is not a novel that I'm working on. It's a comic script. So as I'm writing this, I am envisioning the framing or at least just what face we're gonna see during the conversation. So this first scene in act three is supposed to be really sad and I had a really good idea about how to navigate that scene with the framing. I think it's gonna be interesting and just really, really terrible and I love it. So far we have 365 words written and it's been about an hour. So not bad. We're almost done with that first scene and uh, soon we're gonna be in Paris.
I'm making white bean and charred soup. Jonathan's gonna get home pretty late from work, so at least there'll be some soup for him. But while this is cooking, we're gonna get back to writing. I do want to mention that it's 6.30 already, and in total we have written 1,330 words. So we met our 1,000 word goal today, uh, so I feel pretty good. I still want to keep writing until we get to Paris. Uh, right now where we're at is we have left Dijon, but we have not entered Paris. That's pretty much all I can say, unfortunately. It's literally going to be spoilers. I am having a lot of fun though. I'm bringing back a couple of really cool characters that I had barely touched upon during the tournament, so they're coming back. They're awesome characters and I have actually been drawing them. Um, if you want to see any of those sketches, I'll be putting them up on my Ko-Fi account. If I haven't already, they're gonna be up there eventually, but yeah, they're now in the story and it is so much fun to write them. They say a lot of funny stuff. Apart from the fact that we're in a really sad part of the story, these characters are giving me life. Hello! It is the next day and I was gonna vlog earlier but it would just be me writing and not really saying much because I've just been trying to figure out the sequence of mini scenes between how we get from Dijon to Paris, like what exactly needs to happen. I have spent the entire afternoon writing it. I've written 800 words since I finished my day job work. And now in the story, we are officially entering the gates of Paris. I'm really excited and I'm completely nerding out on the map of Paris in the Middle Ages, mostly because I'm trying to figure out, okay, so if we have people coming from Dijon, they're obviously going to enter Paris probably from the south. I've just been trying to look at the map and see if there's an actual gate that they would go under or if there's a bridge that they would go over just like little details like that so i can mention it in the script and then future jasmine when she finally gets around to drawing the scene she'll know what some of the panels will have to include for her to kind of look up more reference images for it since we're just working on the script we don't have to worry too much about the mechanics of what they're exactly going through but i do want to get just some general idea of what was it like to enter Paris in the Middle Ages? So I found um, a map on Wikipedia, of course. It was just like my first search. And that first search gave me this map. This map is from 1380. I looked it up on the Google Maps thing and this is how it's usually displayed. So I saved that map, I turned it around so that it's this way instead and this is today's map of Paris and look how cool this is you can actually tell the old neighborhood blocks so if we zoom in into the Notre Dame there it is and I was just nerding out before turning on the camera because look at that the streets are the same I mean obviously we know this you're walking down these streets and you can tell that these are medieval streets but to see it in a map and then to see it in Google Maps that is just so freaking cool. Now, at our honeymoon two years ago, the, this area was closed because of the fire at the Notre Dame, so I never actually got to see the Notre Dame up close, which is an utter shame, and I'm gonna have to go back to truly see its beauty. Wow, look at that, that's really intense. And it looks like in this period, there were only two bridges. Now, what I wanted to know was the city gate. So if our characters are coming up from this direction, going into the city, did they go through any city gates? And it looks like they did, because look, there's a gate right here. So I just need to find 
where exactly they went through. I'm actually just trying to see in the modern map the border of that gate and it I mean if I had more time I probably could tell by the map where the gates were like it could have it could be this anyways I just wanted to share that cool detail and I'm definitely saving this map the story takes place 30 years after this map so I don't think too much has changed I think 30 years is a perfectly fine delay Happy Monday! We are back from Joshua Tree. I spent this morning unpacking most of our things. The only thing that's left is this pile of stuff. But I'm gonna need Jonathan's help to put it all back into place in our camping closet. But to give you an update on what is going on. Why haven't I been writing? I've mostly been drawing. There is an explanation for that, so bear with me. My biggest struggle and why I've stopped writing for right now is because I never fleshed out exactly what Alice did in the past that brought her to this point. I knew I was gonna have to do it eventually. I couldn't think of like an emotionally riveting backstory for her that wasn't cliched. I didn't want to lean into the backstories that are typical of these hero stories. So I've just been like thinking about it, thinking about it, and I have been talking to my friend 
on it and they gave me some good ideas. So I've been mulling it these past couple of days of not writing basically. I've been writing in my head. Alice is at this point where she is reevaluating her past actions. This is the start of Act 3. Act 3 is really important. It is the culmination of all the elements that you are including in the story. So Act 3 as a writer, you really do need to know what the heck you're doing. Let me show you how Save the Cat kind of tells you this is what you should be doing in Act 3. According to Save the Cat, Act 1 was the thesis, Act 2 was the antithesis, and Act 3 is the synthesis. If the midpoint was the crossroads of all things, then this final act is the blending of all things. The hero will combine their Act 1 self with their Act 2 self to create a brand new, improved Act 3 self. I hope that summarizes just how important understanding your story by the time you get to Act 3 is. And that's my hesitation in continuing to write Act 3. I, if I don't know Alice's backstory fully, if I'm not entirely sure the theme of, of the story. I mean, I know that there's a few themes in the story, but the one where Alice has to reevaluate her actions, that one in particular, I'm not 100% clear on and I don't want to proceed and writing act three until that gets sorted out. So that is going to involve a lot of brainstorming and because this is a comic I'm trying to draw Alice in her more dynamic expressions to try to really gauge what her personality is. Um, I actually struggled with this last year in figuring out Alice's personality because I think there's I'm drawn to two different stories, almost like two Alice's in my head, and they're battling it out. Um, both are compelling stories, but they're different, so I need to decide which one I want. Do I want a spunky Alice who um, wants to break the rules and she's kind of a tomboy, or do I want the other Alice, the Alice who is sort of the reluctant hero who is just out of making a lot of mistakes, she ends up in this situation that she didn't really intend to, and now she has to kind of suck it up. I'm more inclined for the second story because the the first one has already been told and I do find the first one to not resonate with me as much and I don't find it as realistic. So if I'm leaning towards the second one, I have to put Alice in a position where she really messes up but it is a type of mistake that we could all relate to. I do like a spunky Alice but in the whole theme of the story, it just doesn't quite go with it so it goes <laughs> it kind of reminds me of that term kill your darlings where as a writer you do have to make tough decisions about getting rid of things even though you think it's a cool idea but it's just not gonna work so let it go how am I trying to let it go by drawing a lot of versions of Alice and just seeing if I can really get to her personality. I'm going to continue to do that today and if I make any headway then we can start writing again and this will be more of a writing vlog. <laughs> I'm really hungry too so I'm gonna make breakfast, put some music on, try to keep rummaging through Alice's backstory, see exactly what we can figure out to make make it make sense. As you've seen, I've been drawing these designs on my iPad and I'm noticing that they're still coming out really stiff. The whole point of drawing is to just flesh out really quickly some ideas. Drawing on the iPad is triggering my perfectionism, so we're going to keep doodling with pencil and paper instead and see if we'll be more successful in trying to capture Alice's personality better with that. I have these these mochi bites that my mother-in-law got me from Costco and they are really good. I'm obsessed with them. Mm.
It's been three and a half hours. I got this amount of doodling. I think I sorted out the backstory. The backstory has to be tied to the theme and do I feel better? No. I think having stopped all my progress let my imposter syndrome just wreak havoc on my self-esteem these past couple of days. Even though I've done progress, it doesn't feel like it's any good. So I feel kind of lousy right now. So I'm gonna take a break and then when we get back, I think we can start writing again. Oh, before I move on, I've been posting my sketches and any extra sneak peek bits of Girl Night on my coffee account. You're welcome to check it out. I also have been updating that profile. So if you want to just get notified of anything new that I post, go ahead and follow my coffee account. I bought the salad dressing at a Japanese grocery store. It's called Creamy Golden Gomadare. I don't know what it tastes like, but I'm assuming it's like a sesame mayo type of dressing, which I am obsessed with. It's actually not freezing in the kitchen today, so I think we're gonna stay and right in the kitchen. So the timer just went off. I wrote 99 words. 99 words. It was basically the intro into the new space that's gonna take up a chunk of Act 3 for Alice. Last week I redid the outline for this portion. In redoing the outline, that's when I came upon the realization that my theme is not super clear, so then the sequence of events don't really have a direction and I did find myself focusing on things in the story that didn't really serve a purpose and that's where we get into dangerous territory of you are veering off course so I'm cutting a few strands from it so no no side stories with some of these new characters in this new setting we're just gonna set up the setting have a few months pass and then make things change so I'm not going to focus on the other things because now that I'm clear on what the theme is, I do feel a little confident that it's okay for things to move quickly. We are going to continue. I feel a little bit better. I think this is the best I can do right now. Um, I'm, I have to keep writing. Once I'm done, I'll have to do some serious revising and make sure that things make sense. But I'm just too deep in the story right now to see things clearly. So now that we're pretty much back on track, I think this is where I'm going to end this vlog and the next one is going to cover how we're going to get to the halfway point in Act 3. Because a lot is going to happen, a lot of fun stuff. So I'm going to continue to write. Make sure to check out my coffee page for any sketches. I also uploaded a portion of my script there, taking place in Paris. If you'd like to see that, go check it out. The link is in my description. And I also made my Girl Night Writing playlist public. I'll have the link to that playlist down below as well. It's a great playlist for medieval music, so if you're looking for that, check it out as well. In the meantime, thanks for watching. Subscribe to my channel if you haven't, and I will see you in the next video. Bye!